Hi, I'm Barry Gilreath, the evangelist at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. Also your host today for Fabric of Family. Do we have any parents out there? I dare say that many of you watching this program today are parents. And we're going to talk about a subject today that I believe you'll find very interesting and helpful. And we're going to do it from a biblical perspective. We're going to talk about how to avoid the regrets of parenthood. And I have with me two guests, Jeff Archie and also Chad Dollahite, who've been with us in previous programming. Now, the very subject that we're discussing today, avoiding the regrets of parenthood. Uh, we are suggesting that there can be regrets, are we not? Mm -hmm. Indeed. You know, recently one of my elders made a comment to me. He said, Jeff, by the time you figure out how to rear your children, they're already grown and gone from home. And I thought that was just some tremendous wisdom. But uh, sadly, we see in Scripture, for example, Eli in the book of 1 Samuel, his regrets. Uh, you think of David, how he cried for Absalom and uh, when Absalom was wicked and when Absalom died. So sad to say there are all those regrets, but we can be of a proactive measure. That's what Fabric of the Family does. And, and I appreciate the point you brought out, Jeff, of how, uh, you know, use the illustration of when your children are grown, then, then you're experts. But I think that that's very revealing because it affirms that there are no perfect parents. We all make mistakes because we're human. However, if we will turn to the scriptures and we will commit ourselves to the scriptures, mm -hmm. then we'll be less likely to have as many regrets mm -hmm. when we get older. Chad, you have children. Are you uh, learning things as you go along uh, in, in uh, parenting your children? Every day. <laughs> Every day. It, it's uh, it's an adventure. It, it's, it's something that, you know, I wouldn't take anything for it. But uh, there is so much to learn. Um, you know, children are so different. Uh, I've said it, and I've heard a lot of my friends who have multiple, more than one child say it. Uh, they, you know, it's hard to believe sometimes that two people so very different could come from the same mama and daddy <laughs> because children can be so different and you have to of course that all goes into parenting you have to take into account their their individual personalities but but yes you you certainly learn uh, every day from from your children as well as trying to teach them and it is a growing process and of course i, I have children uh, ranging from uh, the oldest is uh, 22 and uh, a son, and I've got a uh, uh, another son who's in college as well, and then uh, two younger girls. So I've seen kind of the whole uh, spe spectrum there, and uh, it is a learning process. But we want to provide for our viewers today some practical things that they can do that can help them to avoid any regrets or revo avoid many of the regrets that sometimes can uh, result in parenting children. Number one, avoid shouting matches and maintain control of your emotions. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I don't know of a child that probably has not done that. I don't know of a parent in order to get a point across that has not done that. You find afterwards that there's always a regret, and as we've talked in our earlier broadcast, not necessarily the words that were said, but the tone and how it was said. You know, I think about the occasions when I was growing up that I raised my voice to my mom and dad. And I can't tell you that although I apologized, we made things right, and I love my mom and dad. They're in their mid-70s, and I always thrilled to talk to them and see them. I can tell you that that even bothers me a little this day that I even did that. Mm. And so we think about, you know, Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So a correction should never be to drive a child, but to draw him closer. 
and uh, it's very difficult to keep those emotions under wrap at times but again uh, as both you and Chad have said Barry you grow into that you grow with that and, and you learn from it and you move onward. Yeah, and, and what a great passage, Ephesians 6 and 4 that you alluded to. Also, Colossians 3 and verse 21 uh, says something very similar to that. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Mm -hmm. And so, as parents, we understand there's going to be conflict between the parent and between the child. And as parents, we understand we have a responsibility to nurture, to raise that child up. But at the same time, we don't need to allow a situation or to allow our child to cause us to get so worked up emotionally or in anger that we say something or we do something that later we regret. So we don't want to... Uh, get into these shouting matches with our children. We need to learn to bite our tongue, uh, to say what needs to be said, to do what needs to be done, but to do it in the right way. What's another area that uh, we need to think about if we want to avoid regrets? Parenthood. Whip those children. <laughs> discipline. <laughs> children need discipline. Um, this this is something that I, you know I think in our day and age it's hard to overemphasize. Um, you know I don't think there are too many people out there that don't recognize the name Doctor Spock, mm. who taught everybody how awful it is to dare to spank your child, uh, and of course now years later has retracted that and said you know well I don't think I had that quite right of course this is after the fact that all the books have been published and so many people gave up on discipline well those of us who stuck with uh, st stuck with the Bible uh, we understood all along that he was wrong because the Bible teaches discipline children need that and it's not always a spanking I mean there are other forms of discipline and that's a good point to bring out because uh, we do need to discipline our children <laughs> Uh, some children respond better to certain types of discipline than the other. As you pointed out, Chad, children are different. Come from the same mom and daddy, perhaps, but they can be as different as night and day. But nevertheless, there is a, uh, I suppose, a thinking amongst many in our country today uh, that you should never, ever spank a child. Well, when you look to the Scriptures, the Scriptures don't teach that. Uh, over in the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15, it says, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Uh, over in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13, Withhold not correction uh, from the child, for if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. The point is, it's not pleasant to exercise discipline upon our children. We love our children. But there is a greater picture. There is something of greater importance, and that is teaching that child a lesson to where that child um, maybe they don't completely understand the reasoning of why we tell them they can or can't do something, but over a period of time they'll come to learn that mm -hmm. uh, to help them to avoid the pitfalls that would be very hurtful to them. Now having brought up the subject of discipline, and Chad brought up the subject of spanking, um, I want us just to touch on this too because, uh, you know, uh, I think this is a mistake that sometimes young parents can make, and we may have some young parents watching today, uh, who, who say, you know, I want to be the kind of parent that God wants me to be. And yes, I see the Bible does uh, teach me that uh, spanking is an appropriate means of discipline. Uh, but you know, it is also possible that as a parent, I can go to an extreme in that as well. And uh, we need to understand that. Uh, children are different. Uh, the way that you might uh, discipline or spank a child, uh, you know, that's a, a, a toddler uh, would be different than uh, the way you might handle it if that uh, child is, say, in uh, uh, elementary school mm -hmm. or middle school. A and so we need to keep that in mind. Uh, we need to remember these are frail little children and they need to be disciplined. But we need to remember how strong we are as an adult mm -hmm. and we want to ensure that the proper amount of discipline is given but we need to keep in mind 
the age of the child that we are disciplining. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Barry. And, and I stop and think, you know, when I was, you know, you see little ones that do things they should not do, and sometimes the mama will maybe pop their little hand. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're a little older, as you mentioned, elementary school, sometimes that spanking comes. We call them whippings where I'm from, <laughs> depending on what you did. But when you hit the teenage years, uh, as I tell teenagers, the two nastiest words a teenager can hear is the word exam and the word grounded. Yeah. And when you take away that freedom, oh my. Uh, a very quick illustration. I remember a mother telling me recently, the congregation there, she said her little boy, I believe he was eight or nine, and she spanked him for something he did. As soon as she spanked him, he turned around and went back and did the same thing. And she said, wait, wait a minute. She said, why are you doing the same thing after I spanked you? He said, well, Mama, that only hurt for just a little bit. <laughs> I, I've got to express this. Boys and girls, don't ever admit that. <laughs> be smart. <laughs> and, and I told our teens, you know, be smart. So when she learned that, she learned that when she began to restrict the Game Boys, the Xboxes, the computer usage, things like that, that hurt him more and longer and established it. So, as you say, discipline, it varies in the child. I know one of the worst things in the mind of uh, my daughter uh, that we could do is to take away her cell phone. <laughs> you, you, you're talking about walk the line. You Ooh. even threaten to take away the cell phone, and, and buddy, she, she walks the line. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, children are different, and uh, there are different means to discipline. And, of course, the overall goal is to bring them uh, in submission to that which is right. Mm -hmm. And whatever means or method used uh, and enables us to do that is what we ought to use. And we, um, we've got to understand that as parents, like you said, the big picture. Children look to parents. They form their image of God by looking at mom and dad. Mm -hmm. is, is God a pushover that lets me have my way and do whatever I want? Well, yeah. how, are, how are mom and dad? I want my children to understand there are rules. There are rules in my house. There are rules in life. There are especially rules with God. And if you don't follow those rules in any of those circumstances, there are consequences. Yeah. And I want my children to understand that and respect that. And it may be, you know, it may be a spanking. I've got a child that you touch him and he just acts like he's just dying in pain. Uh, it, it doesn't really take a spanking so many times with it. And then I've got another child that that seems to be all he understands is a swat on the rear end or on the leg. Uh, but, but children have to understand there are rules. And, and that someone is in charge, and it's not the child. So many times you see the children running the household. Uh, Barry, your mom uh, is in the educational system, and, and she has told me before that she sees so many situations where the children are in charge of the household. And I know I've had situations before with my own son, uh, my oldest little boy who's about to turn four, that I've said, uh, uh, are you ready to go? And he says, no, not ready to go. I say, well, come on, don't you want to? Don't you want to go on? Let's go home. No, I don't. And, and I've actually literally said, let me rephrase that. Let's go. We are going home. You know, I may give him a chance to say, okay, but but he he understands that in the long run, in the in the end of things, what Dad says goes, and and what Mom says goes, and and that's another thing that we ought to mention. Parents back one another up. Yeah, that, that's a good point good. because uh, if you have one parent that is uh, maybe more sympathetic in one direction or the other, uh, that causes problems, not only in the marriage, but it causes problems with the children. Mm -hmm. And children see that, and they will try to pit mom against dad or vice versa if they think that they can get away with it. Now, you may not always agree with uh, each other on matters of discipline, but the thing is, those things need to be discussed Privately. in a private area, in a private room where the children don't know anything that's uh, being said uh, because when the law is laid down or the discipline is exercised, mom and dad need to stand together and say, yes, this is what will be done. That'll help our children as much as anything. We need to have some consistency in our discipline. My wife tells a story of being told no by one parent one time and she went to the other one 
and uh, didn't say that the other parent had said no. Well, that parent said yes. And so she was all excited, thinking she was going to get to do what she wanted to do. Then Dad found out. Dad was the one that said yes. And Dad found out that Mom had said no. And so not only did she not get to do what she wanted to do, she got disciplined for trying to pit Mom against Dad. And, and that's, that's good. Parents need to stand together when it comes to discipline and, and all things when it relates to the children. Mm -hmm. Well, those are some good points. We've talked about discipline. And, and again, this is in the context of avoiding regrets of parenthood. Uh, so we need to exercise discipline when it's necessary. Uh, something else that I want to bring out for our time is gone is spending time with our kids. That's so important. Uh, the average uh, child spends about 37 seconds each day with their father. Now think about that about 37 seconds of actually spending time. I'm not talking about being in the same room. Mm -hmm. You can be in the same room with someone and, and really not be having any kind of communication, uh, any kind of uh, relationship building, but, but actually talking and, and, and getting into the lives of one another. 37 seconds. What do y'all think about that? That's sad. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's a uh, it, it explains a lot of the problems in the family in our country uh, and all over the world. Uh, but one thing we could say, one of the best ways to spend some good quality time with your children and as a family period, mm -hmm. sit down, eat dinner together. That's one of the things that seems to have gone away, especially a lot in our country, uh, is the family meal. What, what better place to spend some good quality time than sitting down, having a meal together, um, I would also say one of the keys to spending time with your children is learn to turn the television off. Um, you know, it, unless you're watching GBN. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I mean, so many people spend. They come home from work, the TV comes on, and it doesn't go off until bedtime. Right. Uh, and it, and it's and a lot of times it's junk that's being watched. It's yeah. not even uh, programming that's fit for for those who call themselves followers of God to watch. Mm -hmm. But children desperately need that time together. You can discipline, uh, and, and you can. Uh, avoid the shouting matches, mm -hmm. but if you're not spending time with your children, uh, that's that's a regret. I can promise any parent that you'll have uh, when you when you reach when those, when those children are out of the house. What about prayer? How does prayer fit into our discussion? Oh, I can think of families who, uh, after the the boys and girls are grown and starting their own family, I've heard them say one thing that meant so much to me was every night my mom and dad heard my prayers before I went to bed, or we had family time together where we spent time in prayer. Mm. Oh, quite obviously, you're praying for you know parents. You and we you know how do we learn to pray by hearing parents or by hearing men at church, our Bible school teachers, and so on. Obviously, prayer is of vital importance. So Barry, I would also say this, and I know our time's about gone, but it comes back again to a matter of priorities. If we're not having the time with our children, then it's time, first of all, when you look at a schedule, eliminate some things and create that time that you need. And I'm encouraged to see more and more young families not taking the time, but making the time and setting their priorities. Okay. Jeff, that's some good points. We need to keep that in mind. Prayer is so important. Uh, you know, uh, the father of, uh, of Samson prayed for him over in Judges chapter 13, verse 8, verse 12, verse 24. Um, you know, he was praying for, for, for his child. And, and we need to do that as well. We need to, to pray for our children. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention before our time has expired is the importance of not only teaching a value system to our children, but living that value system before our children. Mm -hmm. We've all heard the uh, saying, don't do as I do, do as I say. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the truth of the matter is, if we're not doing something we ought to be doing, our children are probably going to end up doing it. Mm -hmm. They are watching us, are they not? You better believe it. <laughs> the answer to that statement, do as I do and not as I uh, or do as I say and not as I do is, is yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not going to happen. Children watch us. Focus. I got a little boy, as I said, about turn Screen four. Recording. He wants Button. to do everything and that he does. Controls. One of the biggest failures will be to fail to teach our children the Bible, but just as big a failure is to fail to live the Bible before our children. And that's something that we all need to do, not only for the benefit of our children, but for the benefit of all of those who are around us. I want to thank both of you men for being with us today. We've had a very profitable discussion on the importance 
of avoiding the regrets of parenthood. I want to thank you today as well. It's always a delight and joy to come in your home and to be able to discuss these matters of the utmost importance as they relate to God's Word in the family. Until next time. Let's make the most of a minute. Aren't some television commercials unbelievable? Have you seen the ones which advertise CDs? The other day one such commercial came across the screen professing to promote the world's greatest piano player, a man who had sold more CDs than anyone else. As I sat there being fed these statistics about this remarkable man, I realized something sort of silly. I never had heard of him. I mean, I hadn't bought his CDs. I didn't recognize his name. I mean, the world may have very well embraced him, but if so, they did it behind my back. <laughs> you know what? That, that doesn't really bother me. I mean, there are many, many other things that it seems sometimes the whole world is doing and believing that, I, frankly, I don't. Sometimes it's because I'm a Christian. We sometimes do things against our conscience because so many other folks are doing it, but we need to guard against that. Exodus 23, 2, the Bible says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Let's never compromise right and trade it for wrong just to be like the person standing next to us. I'm Glenn Colley, hoping you make the most of your minutes.